What's up guys? It's Colin Coates from Built to Wander. I'm out at the 2022 SEMA show with my build partner, Matt Thompson. We put together three fresh builds for 2023, debuted them at the SEMA show, and now we're gonna show you guys what we've been working so hard on. We're gonna do some build walkarounds, and finally, when we depart SEMA, we're heading straight to Sand Hollow to get these things off-road and show you how well these purpose-built vehicles perform. Before we do that, like this video, subscribe to the Driving Line channel, and let's get after it. So standing behind me is the first of three builds that we brought to SEMA. This is my 2022 Jeep Wrangler 392. I worked with Matt Thompson and his team at 3D Off-Road to completely rebuild this truck. Back in the summer, we started with a 37 inch Nitto Ridge Grappler and we left it pretty stock, but I've had this dream of building the ultimate Jeep Wrangler and I feel like we've pretty damn well accomplished it. So I'm gonna let Matt do the honors, walk us around, fill you in on all the components, and then from there, we'll introduce the other builds we brought out to the show. What's up guys, this is Matt Thompson from 3D Off-Road. We built the baddest Wrangler out there for Built to Wander. We started out with a 42 inch Nitto Tire Trail Grappler, custom 20 inch wheels from KMC with Motobill armor completely around this thing. We did a front bumper chop, the high clearance fenders. We've done rock sliders, because when we get this thing out in the rocks, we want to be able to know that they're going to hold up and not damage the body and their rear bumper. So building this thing around a 42 inch tire, we really had to make sure that we had as much up travel as we could get. And so we decided to go with Bill Stein 9200 triple bypass. So we built the shock towers pretty high to maximize without cutting the body. We also did Moto Built's triangulated four link in the rear and a three link front. So on the triangulated four link, we decided to use the Rock Jock uh, aluminum control arms with their new rock nut design absolutely love these we don't have to maintenance them once they're cinched down and tightened down they don't come loose um, also as always we use their johnny joints we also used bill stein bump stops in the rear to help absorb that rear impact as we're you know wanting to drive fast through the desert through the small bouldery rocks it just really helps absorb that last little bit of impact we always use anti-rock sway bars they maintain you know great on-road performance as well as off-road performance they flex well they just um, really, really outperform the stock stuff for, for sure. We spec this thing out with a nine inch spider tracks housing, tube works, 10 inch ring gear, 40 spline competition, ARB, 300 M spider track shafts. And you know, to top it off, we did the Willwood brakes. We had to make sure that with a 42 inch tire, um, this thing could stop. So we decided to go with Willwood six piston calipers, front and rear. Um, with a much larger rotor. We also did the Moto Built 20 gallon uh, fuel tank in the back. We had to move that tank to the back for the triangulated four link in the rear. So we've kind of showed you guys everything in the back. Let's go around to the front and see what we've done there. You know, normally you guys have seen a lot of our builds where we've done a coilover and a bypass system. We wanted to keep this pretty simple. We decided to use rock crawler four and a half inch springs that way, um, you know, we can keep the packaging small and show everybody that you don't always have to go do a coil over and a bypass. This way you have coils, it'll get the height that we need it to, and you have the controllability of the bypass shocks. So in the front, we also went with a Spider Tracks 9 inch housing, spec'd out all by Eric Miller Motorsports. Also with a 35 spline competition ARB in the front, 35 spline 300 M shafts, inner and outer. Eric is a two time king of the hammers champion, and he knows a little bit about strength and durability so we really really wanted to make sure that this thing was not going to have any issues out on the trail or everyday driving you know the last part of this build is all about steering you know we got to get this thing driving down the road be able to perform in the rocks so we decided to use the yeti steer smarts outer ends our tech aluminum to tie these things together we also outfitted this uh, 392 with a psc power steering kit got rid of that electronic steering that way we're in the rocks, turning these 42s, we can, we're able to steer it. The final touches to this thing, we decided to go with the Warren winch. It is always, always a winch that we just count on. We know it's gonna work when we need it. You never know if you're gonna need to help pull somebody else out. 
you just never know. And of course, Baja Designs, the best lights out there. Uh, we did the LP6 Baja lights up front. We're doing rock lights underneath and we're doing an S-Pod to control everything and keep those uh, switches nice and clean inside. We really like PRP seats. Um, they have these amazing seat covers. You can custom build them as you need to. Um, I've been running them in my, my Gladiator for three years now. They hold up absolutely amazing. They're easy to clean. They install very easily. So there you have it, 392 Wrangler, built to wander by 3D Off-Road. Before we move on to the next vehicles, I just want to say thank you to Matt Thompson and 3D Off-Road. A lot of passion and hard work was put into this build, a lot of late nights at the shop, a couple all-nighters, and uh, it was all worth it because last night we won the Tora Featured Best in Show first place. Love it. 2022 Tora Featured Vehicle Best in Show at the 2022 SEMA Show. I mean, we are stoked. It makes all that hard work worth it. And it's a testament to the hard work and the craftsmanship that Matt Thompson and 3D Off-Road bring to every vehicle built. So, so stoked to accomplish that with Matt. Thank you for everything. And uh, we're gonna celebrate that and then move on to these next couple vehicles and show you what else we got in store for you at the 2022 SEMA show. All right, so the second of the Built to Wander vehicles that we brought out is my wife's 2021 Ford Bronco Badlands. So of course, this was built down at 3D Off-Road by Matt Thompson, and we totally refreshed the theme, made some more upgrades, and got this really to exactly where we want it to be. So I'll start up front. We, uh, we started with Hefty Fabworks bumpers, literally the first parts that ever went on this Bronco. We've got the radiator skid protecting everything underneath. We've added the Warren winch and the Factor 55 fair lead up front, so we've got recovery dialed. The bumper has Baja Designs lighting in it. We've even done Baja Designs lighting on the A-pillar. Now moving up into the corner here, we've got Bilstein 6100 series coilovers on all four corners. The Bilsteins make a huge difference. Matt and I both agreed when this thing came out from the factory, it was on the Bilstein ESCV end stop control valve shock that comes from the Sasquatch package. It rode a little harsh, it was a little stiff. These soften the ride way up, but without giving up any of that controllability. It doesn't feel like it sways too much. It still feels planted and controlled, but just more plush. So really excited about those. It allowed us to lift the vehicle just enough to fit a 37 inch Nitto tire. Uh, we run Camberg billet upper control arms to correct all the geometry in the front. And we also added Steer Smart's tie rod ends, which are way beefier than stock. So we won't have any issues bending or breaking those with a heavier duty 37 inch tire in the front. So um, one thing that I'm really excited about is the new livery. So we added the Bronco Ranger stripe package to this thing. Uh, it's kind of the first that I've seen of the new Bronco that has that old school stripe package. It gives it that classic look, uh, but still has that modern feel. The reason we were able to do that stripe package is these new ADV fiberglass fenders. We had them painted to match and uh, they turned out really sharp. I think they totally changed the look of this Bronco. So moving on to the rear, um, you can see here we've got 1552 analog HD wheels. They're a 17 inch wheel. They look like an old Steely, which really ties into that classic Bronco Ranger stripe package and just gives it that old school vibe. We've got a best top Trek top in their premium black twill, which is a really nice fabric material. Um, just gives it a little bit more aggressive styling with that fastback look. In the back, we've got the Hefty Fabworks rear bumper, some Baja Designs backup lights, Got the Hefty Fabworks rear brand new spare tire delete. We've got the Ba Designs rear tail light here. So it's got a brake light, a running light, actual reverse lights in it, and a license plate light underneath. So a ton of functionality. The other thing that we've done here, we've got uh, rock slide engineering step sliders. Now we've had these on the Bronco for a while. If we crawl underneath, you'll see some skid marks from rocks and different things, which shows just how strong they really are. But since we added another inch of lift in 37 inch tires, this thing sits up a little taller. So it's really nice having that step drop out for my wife to get in and out. Like I said, this is her vehicle, it's her daily driver. So just that added functionality makes a big difference on the day to day. The other thing we did is Camberg's kinetic billet lower control arms, adding some more strength to the rear. And we also added Steer Smart's rear track bar, keep everything centered back there uh, with that rear axle. So. It's kind of a, a quick and dirty walk around, but again, we made some changes. We brought it out to SEMA to show it off. We've had a ton of people walking around. I think everyone really loves how it came together. 
and I know my wife is super happy. She got here uh, yesterday, saw it for the first time since we made all these changes, and I think it's safe to say she's in love. So super stoked with how this thing came out. We're gonna have it out at Sand Hollow, do some off-roading. We haven't had it in the dirt with the 37s yet, so really excited to see how well it does out there on the trail. All right, last but not least, we've got a third vehicle here to show y'all something very special. I know y'all remember my buddy, Derek Blackmore. He's helped out with the channel for the last year or two. He's always behind the scenes, helping me film at events, film the adventures in the shop, helping us put together the vehicles. So this year we wanted to help him in return and uh, do something rad. So what do we have here? So we have a 2022 Gen 3 Ford Raptor, first one with long travel. So I kind of got sick of seeing Colin's awesome Jeep builds and I was like, you know what? It's time that we do something special for myself. So can't wait to show you guys what we have. Yeah, so uh, like you said, first uh, long travel Gen 3 Raptor. We worked with Evil Manufacturing out in California, put this truck together, and uh, I'll let Derek introduce it from there, but uh, really stoked to show you guys what we worked so hard on and can't wait to see this thing out on the trails with us. So this is the very first Gen 3 Raptor with long travel and wide body. So I built this because in Colorado, we have a lot of high alpine stuff, but I also like to do a lot of desert stuff as well. So if I go to Phoenix, Arizona, I want to go to Glamis, if I want to go to Sand Hollow, anything like that, I want to bring something that's going to be pretty fun and just exhilarating to drive. So we partnered up with Evil Manufacturing. So we have about 19 inches of travel with their kit. So we have the Bilstein 9200 coilover and triple bypass. And then we have fiberglass by Fiberworks. So this is actually a three inch wider than the stock Gen 3 Raptor. So in the rear, we partnered with Evil Manufacturing to do a cantilever rear end. So I do a lot of motocross stuff and, and I always throw my dirt bike in the back and I didn't want to lose that precious cargo space by having the shocks actually go through the bed and go into the bed of the truck. So we decided that we wanted to do this cantilever kit, which actually gives 22 inches of wheel travel in the rear. So we have the same shocks as the front and the rear. So there's going to be the 9200 triple bypass and coils on all four corners. Moving on to the bed of the truck. Usually people do two spare tires in the back on their tire carrier. So Evil Manufacturer actually designed this to where I can put my front tire of my dirt bike on this side and still keep a spare tire on the right. We also have room in the back to do a jack and a gas can. So Evil Manufacturing also designed this rear bumper. So this actually keeps your sensors and you even have a hitch behind the license plate. So Evil Manufacturing also did a third brake light for us too. We're gonna have two Baja design lights as well as a camera for the bed so this truck is my daily driver so i wanted to have a wheel and tire setup that's going to complement both off-road and driving on the road so we decided to do a 37 inch nitto trail grappler tire you know the sidewall on these are super strong so if we are off-roading i don't have to worry about puncturing the side but on the highway it's going to be super smooth and quiet on the roads we decided to put a terraflex olympus wheel on it and this is a true beadlock as well so in the front of the truck, we decided that we we're gonna do the Evil Manufacturing front bumper. And then on top of it, we did the Baja Design LP6 lights. On the hood of the truck, we decided to do two of the Baja Design Amber LP4s just to complement and kind of tie everything in together. There you have it guys, this is my Gen 3 Raptor and now it's built to wander. All right, so SEMA is officially over. Matt and I had a photo shoot this morning with Nitto Tire and Driving Line out in the desert with all three of the vehicles we brought out this year. And now, what are we doing? We decided to come out to San Hollow and uh, test out the new build. You know, that's been a thing that we like to do. We like to take them straight from SEMA and come out here and, and try them out. Exactly, for us, it's kind of one of those things that like proves that what we did was done right, that we actually went to the lengths of fully building this thing. We didn't cut any corners, everything was done. So we got the 392, we've got the Bronco. We're getting ready to unload the Jeep off the trailer, go hit the trail for an hour or two get some action shots and uh, see how well this new build performs. You ready to do it? Let's do it. All right.
All right, so we got out to San Hollow. We got to the top of the world. We were gonna go just beyond that where we could hit up plan B, nice little rock trail, put the Bronco in the 392 through its paces. And we had a little issue. What happened, Matt? Well, unfortunately we melted a fuel line. Um, you know, as anybody knows, sometimes you just have some issues. And um, after a fresh build like this, there was a lot of work done in a very short amount of time. So now we know what will work and what won't. And we're gonna go back to shop and get it fixed. Yeah, like Matt said, you know, we put a ton of work into this Jeep, but we had to do some custom exhaust work based, based on the suspension and some different things that were in the way. We knew the fuel lines could be an issue. We did our best to heat wrap the exhaust and do some uh, heat shield over the fuel lines, but <clears throat> turns out it wasn't enough. So not a big deal. Just w wasn't able to get out and do what we had hoped to today but there's gonna be plenty of more wheel under Oh yeah, we have lots of time and you know, I'm, like I said, I'm be grateful to get this thing back to the shop, get her dialed in and I can't wait to get back out here. Still had a blast getting it up there. It looked like the suspension was working the pretty well. The suspension is working amazing. I'm super happy with our shock mounts and the angles of everything. It's super plush and, and through the go fast stuff, it was a lot of fun. The Bronco did great, no issues with that. In fact, we even had to hook up some Factor 55 recovery gear to that rear hefty Fabworks bumper on the Bronco up to that moto belt front bumper on the 392 and, and pull it all the way down the mountain. I wish we had a uh, kinetic rope with us. Unfortunately, we only had a toe strap. Yeah, you know, it's always but, better in the off-road scenario, you know, to use a kinetic rope, just helps keep the tension on things. And when you need to gain momentum, you're not worried about yanking on stuff. So, um, yeah. you know, if you do have to use that, take your time, you know, get it through and get everybody down safely. Yep, so, well, we got her loaded up. So it's on to Denver, let's hit the road. All right, guys, we made it back to 3D Off-Road here in Colorado Springs. Thank you so much for following along, allowing us to introduce you to all three of our new builds at SEMA this year. We can't wait to get this uh, 392 in the shop, dialed back in, get out on the trail and start enjoying these builds. Drop us a comment below. Let us know what your favorite build was, what your favorite part you saw. And as always, hit the like button if you did and subscribe if you haven't. Until next time, wander on. Thanks for watching Driving Line. If you guys like this video, consider subscribing to our channel so you'll never miss any of the content we create here. Whether you're into trucks, Jeeps, imports, domestic vehicles, or anything in between, we are here to fuel your passion. So hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys next time.